emphasized many times that running barefoot can be a force for progress when it comes to cleaning up your running form, reviving your foot function, as well as your foot strength, and can help create an even more efficient forefoot strike landing during running. This is very important because sensory input optimized through only running barefoot may always play a role in helping to improve your biomechanics because it's easier to directly coordinate the mechanical attributes that result in a lighter foot ground exchange, which is a necessary precursor for reducing impact on the body, but also barefooting in general enables the highest levels of muscular engagement of the foot, helping dramatically strengthen the feet. In this way, barefoot running can really help the feet build up enough resilience to protect against foot ailments and balance impairments because when the feet are very strong, this will help feed more ankle stability, giving you a much stronger base for steady and secure balance control during running. However, many runners aren't exactly thrilled with the idea of running barefoot. So they look to minimalistic type running shoes that closely approximate the barefoot experience. Barefoot inspired minimalist running shoes, uh, such as the Vibram Five Fingers, Sia, are really a more satisfying alternative to barefooting and helping recharge the feet in a more restorative way. And of course, they may help reduce impact stress because the outsole thinness of these shoes gives the constant sensory flow necessary for helping you engage your legs withdrawal or your foot removal reflexes better, helping you land lighter during running. This is why true minimalistic barefoot like running shoes, like most Vibram Five Fingers, Vivo Barefoots and Sakwas, sort of get the most attention because they are proved to be very similar, but not the same, but very similar to the barefoot experience these shoes really help you sense the terrain in which you are treading on, which can really make a big difference in bringing your mechanical effectiveness into balance and can create overwhelming positive changes in foot function and strength. One issue to be very wary of, however, is one potential general problem with some minimalist running shoes on the market is that many, many shoes are marketed as minimalistic but they really aren't minimalist at all and are more structurally similar to the standard running shoe. Some minimalist running shoes are very far from actually being minimalistic and aren't minimalistic enough to enable the formation of stronger feet. And some minimalist running shoes certainly don't provide enough sensory influence, which may consequentially translate into less optimal improvements in biomechanics during running. These not so minimalist running shoes I'm referring to, in my opinion, are the Nike Free 3.0 and 5.0 and the Sakoni Kinbera 2. Some studies suggest that the Nike Free 3.0 and 5.0, as well as the Sakoni Convera 2, may be the wrong idea in helping you organize safe, efficient running mechanics in a sustained way. And the mechanical hazards associated with these types of running shoes are actually well documented, whereby some studies, which I'm gonna talk about in just a moment, found a connection between running in a Sakoni Convera 2 and injurious risk factors very similar to those observed in many runners who run in the traditional running shoe, suggesting that running in the Sakoni Convera 2s, which again are marketed as minimalistic, may actually provide a very similar running experience and may evoke the same unfavorable, forceful biomechanics to that of the traditional running shoe. But overall, sadly, these shoes are famously marketed as being minimalist. And with that, it's presumed that these shoes, the Nike 3 3.0 and 5.0 and the Sakoni Convera 2 should encourage positive changes in biomechanics associated with a minimalist shoe or a true minimalist shoe, I should say, and running barefoot. Such changes in
running mechanics include a shortened stride, no overstriding, a higher cadence or a higher step rate or step frequency, lighter footsteps, forefoot striking, greater hip extension, increased knee flexion or knee bend, all of which are mechanical traits associated with running barefoot, but are also essential mechanical mediators for funding better running economy and pushes harmful impact away from the lower leg, especially the knee joint. Not to mention, there's a lot of scientific conclusiveness showing that true minimalist running shoes, like most Vibram Five Fingers, encourages these kinds of positive changes in biomechanics, similar to that of running barefoot, that lead to better injury prevention outcomes for running. However, experts have cautioned that minimalist running shoes like the Nike Free and the Sakoni Canberra 2 just aren't getting the job done like the Vibrams are in helping runners adopt more barefoot-like mechanics, which to quickly reiterate, includes a higher step rate, a shorter stride length, a higher back kick, greater knee flexion or knee bend, a non-heel strike landing pattern of the foot, uh, which all add up to a softer, lighter footfall and thus less impact production. As I said, evidence has linked minimalist shoes like the Sakoni Convera 2 to promoting less optimal, almost reckless running mechanics, very similar to how many runners run in the traditional running shoe, which in turn may shift threatening impact on the lower leg as well as the knee joint. Therefore, making the Sakoni Convera 2 uh, somewhat of an invalid minimalist shoe. For instance, a 2014 study published in the Journal of Sports Sciences set out to test whether the Sakoni Convera 2s would prompt immediate adjustments in biomechanics similar to that of running barefoot with a comparative study of other minimalist running shoes such as the Nike Free and the Vibram Five Fingers Sia. The researchers found that the runners who ran in the Vibram Sias engaged their mechanics in ways very similar to that of running barefoot. And from this, these runners could really make a lot of progress in finding relief from a lot of impact-related injuries. However, the researchers found that the Nike Free and the Sakoni Canberra 2 failed to reproduce or encourage barefoot-like biomechanics during running. Now remember, the Nike Free and the Sakoni Canberra 2s are marketed as minimalistic running shoes. Therefore, they should help lead you in a more positive direction in helping you make the mechanical changes necessary to ensure safer running like when you run barefoot. Now, a closer inspection on why the Nike Free and especially the Sakoni Canberra 2s could be a very losing strategy in helping bring together safe mechanical actions similar to that of running barefoot is that the researchers discovered that when runners ran in the Nike Free and in the Sakoni Canberra 2, the runners showed strikingly similar hazardous biomechanics to that of most runners who run in traditional running shoes, whereby the Nike Free and the Sakoni Canberra 2 runners had increased knee extension at touchdown meaning that the knee joint of the landing foot was more unbent and stiff. Increased knee extension or unbending of the knee joint at touchdown during running can be thought of as unnecessary use of the knee joint during running because increased knee extension at touchdown during running often leads to overstriding, causing the foot to fling out way ahead of the body and land far in front of the body which creates a long distance between the body and the landing foot. And it's this positional arrangement that is primarily responsible for more brute impact force, which can have an enormous mechanical burden on the shins as well as the knee joint. I did a video, and the video is linked down below in the description box. In that video, I defined overstriding during running in more detail along with its implications to injury. Now getting back to the study, the Sakoni Canberra 2 runners also had increased dorsiflexion of the foot ankle complex at touchdown, meaning the forefoot or the front of the foot lifted up at touchdown, which may increase heel strike potential, 
when the foot ankle complex is in a dorsiflex position at touchdown, during running, there becomes a greater chance of heel striking because lifting the forefoot or the front of the foot, aka ankle dorsiflexion at touchdown, not only repetitively pulls and strains the front of the shin, a risk factor for anterior sh shin splints, but may certainly overshoot landing the forefoot first. You may miss landing with the forefoot strike altogether because pulling the forefoot back at touchdown easily exposes the heel to the ground, you end up with a greater likelihood of landing heel first at touchdown during running. This could be very problematic from an injury prevention standpoint because oceans of studies have shown that impact forces are highest in runners who heel strike, especially when the knee of the landing foot is completely straight at touchdown. This is when the body is most vulnerable to higher levels of impact. Just for a side note, I also did a video, which is linked down below in the description box, about how too much ankle dorsiflexion at touchdown during running may get you into some trouble in terms of injury. Now the researchers also found that the runners who ran in the Sacconi Convera 2s had a much longer stride length, whereby like overstriding a longer stride length during running, especially during heel strike running, tends to be more associated with a longer break force duration period, which higher amounts of compressive forces tend to be infused in the knee joint. And that mechanical stress in general is well known to increase the risk of runner's knee because it's hard to avoid a high break force when the foot is planted way out in front of the body. There also requires more mechanical pull from the knee of the support leg to tug and move the body up to initial foot strike position. This is one key spot where runner's knee may emerge. The Sacconi Convera 2 runners also had a longer step time duration or longer ground contact time, which means they had reduced cadence or reduced step rate or step frequency, meaning that their foot essentially spent more time on the ground at each step, which may ratchet up impact production because when the foot spends more time on the ground during running, it may open up more time for impact to be produced and accumulate and a longer ground contact time period of the foot could also amplify over pronation or under pronation or other various forms of abnormal foot motions when the foot is stuck on the ground for prolonged periods of time, which in turn may create a wide open slot for injury to potentially develop. Now the fun just doesn't stop there. The Sacconi Convera 2 runners had greater vertical hip displacement which means the runners had a higher bounce height at each step as compared to the Vibram Sia runners. Here's exactly what a greater hip vertical displacement looks like based on an illustration taken from this study. Greater vertical hip displacement during running is a metric indicating a greater landing force or a greater downward force of the foot with the ground during running. And we well know that bone injuries tend to result from excessive impact during running. A greater vertical hip displacement is also an indicator of the ankle being forced into a stiff, unstable, mechanically overloaded position, which may translate into less optimal balance control. The researchers also noted that increased vertical hip displacement during running or greater bounce height corresponds to a straighter support leg, which means that the knee of the landing foot is typically more unbent or straight, which can create a lot of mechanical stress and strain on the knee joint as previous research has found a strong link between an unbent knee of the support leg and increased knee excursion during running which means a lot of abnormal twists and rotations within the knee joint, whereby increases in knee excursion during running is associated with runner's knee as well. Overall, what this research hints is that your mechanics may fall apart in running shoes like the Sacconi Convera 2s or that look and feel very similar to the Sacconi Convera 2s and that these mechanics spurred on by such footwear aren't the mechanics you want to be sustained during running because of their involvement in unleashing deep currents of mechanical stress on the lower leg, especially on the knee joint. 
What is more, if you look at the Sakoni Convera 2s, which look like this, the shoe, in my opinion, doesn't really meet the structural criteria and requirements for being considered a minimalistic type running shoe, which raises the question, why are such shoes marketed as minimalist in the first place, when realistically, they are more structurally similar to the traditional running shoe, which is unsurprising that the study that I just discussed revealed many major mechanical differences between runners who ran in the Sakoni Canberra 2s and runners who ran in true minimalist running shoes like the Vibram Five Fingers Sia's. The take home message is that when it comes to running shoes marketed as minimalistic, but look and feel like the Sakoni Canberra 2, there's some research showing that all efforts of these shoes to serve as a true minimalist shoe has so far failed, probably because these shoes are more closely related in structure to the traditional running shoe. And it's also worth noting that here we see yet another example of imperfect correlations between running shoes with cushioning and safe running mechanics, which helps seals the case that increased shoe cushioning doesn't always mean reduced impact generation or greater impact protection during running. However, the study does bring into focus the corrective effects on biomechanics and thus the protective effects on biomechanics of true minimalist running shoes like the Vibram Five Fingers Sia, probably because true minimalist running shoes that really do closely approximate barefooting provides a good supply line of sensory input, which has a very strong involvement in improving your mechanical control circuits. And that mechanical reset has been shown to be more successful in shoes that give exceptional ground feel. So if you are looking to strengthen your feet, improve your running form, but prefer not to run barefoot, your next best bet may be to run in truly more barefoot feeling shoes like the Vibram Sia's. Down below in the description box, I posted a link to a blog post review I did on top rated uh, barefoot inspired running shoes. The architectural mobility of true barefoot minimalist shoes and the outsole thinness really give you a better shot at enabling you to make full use out of your feet, enabling you to make efficient use out of your feet as well. In contrast, I think the manufacturers at Sakoni missed the greater importance of sensory feedback when they designed the Convera 2s because to a new runner, a lack of sensory and tactile clarity at the feet may translate into less optimal mechanics. And if your running mechanics aren't managed carefully, you of course can end up getting hurt. So again, the implied lesson here is that when it comes to form fixing running shoes, thinner may be better at fixing mechanical impediments faster because you are more self-aware, more branches of motor nerves are activated. And by virtue of that will help strengthen the position of your forefoot strike, achieve better landing stability and prompt closely coordinated movements that may lay the mechanical groundwork for improved mechanical efficiency during running. I hope you've enjoyed this video. To stay up to date on all the latest research regarding the health and performance benefits of barefoot running as well as minimalist running, hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.